I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. We're back looking at the multimeter. You newbies out there, new to the hobby, don't know how to, what all of this stuff does, I'm going to show you another simple way that you can use a multimeter to, uh, to, well, to avoid making this magic smoke come out of your electronics. That's a pretty big deal, right? Stay tuned. In this video, we're going to talk about polarity and checking the polarity of your connectors. Uh, polarity means that the positive comes out where the positive goes and the negative comes out where the negative goes. When you get those two things backwards, the smoke comes out, okay? If you've ever accidentally wired up an ESC backwards, raise your hand, everybody who's done that, yeah, I've done it too, then you know, <laughs> you, you cannot apply reverse voltage really for any time at all without smoking things. And anytime you do something like this, like you, what I've done here is I've, I've put it, this is a field charging pack. I'm gonna use it to charge batteries in the field. And just for funds, I put a fuse on the lead. How about that? Uh, that's the topic of another video, I suppose. But um, I'm just gonna make sure I didn't screw anything up. Now, as I told you in the previous video, the very first step to anything like this is a physical inspection, okay? Make sure that the red wire goes to the red wire, goes to the red wire, goes to the positive. And if you're not sure about an XT60, pull out a factory battery, although as I pointed out, factory batteries aren't 100% guaranteed to be right, but pull out something you know is right, and you can see here that the flat side of the XT60 is the red wire, and the angled side of the XT60 is the black wire. We can also see it's, in, it's imprinted on the XT60 here. I'm not gonna zoom in and show you, but you can take my word for it, plus and minus. So we can take a connector we know is correct, we can plug it in and see black to black, red to red. We haven't crossed our wires by accident anywhere. Once we've done the basic physical inspection, then we get to the multimeter. Now I'm gonna put this in volts mode. Uh, you can't really put it in, uh, in continuity mode when you have an energized circuit. So anytime there's an energized circuit, it, the continuity mode is not gonna work. And of course a battery is always energized. What we're gonna do here though is we're gonna measure voltage. So you can see here that I've got the black wire and the red wire. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the black probe where the black, where the negative is supposed to be. I'm gonna put the red probe where the positive is supposed to be. And when I do that, if everything is correct, I should see a positive voltage, 19.1 volts. And that means the polarity is correct. When black goes to negative and red goes to positive, and I see a positive voltage here, that means the polarity is correct. If, and I'm gonna reverse these, but if I put black to negative and red to positive, and I saw a negative voltage, like so, see negative 19.1, that would mean my polarity was incorrect. Real quick, I'm gonna take a side trip here and just point out to you guys, when I, whenever I stick probes into things, uh, my, my partner gets nervous. That, that didn't sound right. Whenever she sees me stick my probes into whole, I'm gonna have to start over. People get really nervous when they see you sticking probes into the electrical outlets and all this stuff. It's not dangerous, right? This, the, the multimeter is designed to, for it to be safe to do that, but you're gonna wanna avoid doing things like, if I'm sticking this in here, I don't wanna accidentally short these two terminals. And of course they're designed so that it's very difficult to short them. With a straight probe, you see this little, see this little tab right here? See that little tab right there that's sticking out? That is so that if I were to lay a probe across, I couldn't touch both of them at the same time. It would get a little teeter-totter action. That's a safety feature, and that's very important. All right, so it's in this is intentionally designed to make it very hard for you to accidentally short these two. But one way you could short it is, let's say I've got this, and it's just barely... Let's, let's try that again. Let's say I've got this probe, and it's just barely hanging on here. And then I come in with this other probe, and I like, I cross the streams, right? Don't cross the streams, right? You don't want that. If I were to cross those probes, I could, I could short it and, and make some sparks fly and maybe even make my battery light on fire. So be real careful when you're working not to accidentally short the probes. Just be careful, fully insert the probe so that there's not any exposed metal, for example, and then insert the other probe. And just, just be careful not to short the bad, bad news if that happens. Now this is a common 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter barrel plug. Uh, it's probably the most common kind of barrel plug that you're going to encounter uh, in this hobby. 5.5 uh, millimeter refers to the diameter of the outside, 
and 2.1 millimeter refer refers to the diameter of the pin that goes in the center. Another common size is 5.5 by 2.5, which is the same outer diameter but a bigger pin, a thicker pin. Uh, and, and when you've got something like this, you might be in a situation where you don't know the voltage that it's putting out, right? Well, in my case, I, I have so many of these things, I label them so I can just know what I'm doing. But let's say you didn't have that. In general, with these barrel jacks or barrel plugs, and really any any plug like this, the outside part is usually negative or ground, and the inside part is usually positive. Uh, and the reason for that is that positive, if you have positive and it finds ground somewhere else in the house somehow, you can get current flow when you don't want it. So by putting, by keeping the positive, which is the sort of more risky part on the inside, it makes it a little safer. Also notice that we've got this plastic uh, protective part here to again, prevent you from ever accidentally touching the inside and the outside and shorting ground to positive by accident. Unlike with a LiPo though, if I short this, the worst thing that I'm gonna happen is I'm gonna burn out the, the little uh, DC, the wall wart, uh, which is not the end of the world. Uh, we're gonna assume that the outside is ground. We're gonna touch ground to the outside. We're gonna assume that the inside is positive. We're gonna stick the red one on the inside and 12.16 volts. Because I get a positive number here, it means that I am correct. The outside is ground and the inside is positive. 12.16 volts, great. But what if you got an oddball like this? What is this? This is the charging adapter for my Lenovo uh, laptop, and it is a weird one. But it's not too different from oh, the barrel uh, plug that I just showed you. Let's assume that the outside is ground, okay? And if you look on the inside, if you look very carefully, you can see there's a pin in there. Um, it's a little, might be hard for you to see, but there's also metal on the inside of the side wall. So we got something a little strange here, and it's, it's we kind of got to wonder what's what in there. Is Normally I would expect that the center pin would be positive and the outside would be negative. But if I try to test that, by the way, this is live, so I'm going to be real careful when I'm sticking my probes in here not to touch but one metal thing at a time. So, for example, this little the side wall has a little bit of metal on it, and I've got this pin in the center. I'm going to be real careful not to touch those at the same time. In case one is ground and one is positive, I would short it. And you can see we've got this yellow plastic here, which is designed to prevent you from touching two things at once. So I'm just going to go in, and I'm going to touch that pin very carefully. And the multimeter is going to read zero volts. Now since there's zero volts between them, that suggests that they are both they should both have continuity. But I will tell you that when I run this a continuity test, I do not get continuity between them. And what that tells me is that they're both uh, grounded, but for some reason we can't get current flow between them. That's kind of weird. I'm not really sure. Maybe there's a diode that only lets electricity go one way and not the other. I really don't know. But we can say for sure that that center pin is not positive. So it must mean then that this metal on the side wall is positive. Again, I'm going to test that by touching the outside with black, which I, I presume to be negative, ground. And touching the inside to the side wall. I'm going to be careful not to touch the pin. Again, just in case the pin is grounded. I don't want to short it, but I'm going to come in from the side and... 20.2 volts. Okay, so I got 22.2 volts between the outside and the sidewall on the inside. Frankly, I think it's really unlikely that this center pin is actually grounded. And the reason for that is that it would be really poor design to put ground and positive so close together with nothing in between them. If anything were to bend or break this pin sideways, we would have a short and it would destroy the power supply. So I think that pin is there for support, for just physical support maybe. Um, it definitely has zero volts to ground, but it doesn't actually have any ability for current to flow. So maybe, again, maybe there's a diode or something protecting it. I really don't know exactly what the reason is for the design, but we've verified then where ground is and where positive is. Positive is on the inside sidewall, ground is here. What I've got is this. Now this is an XT60 to Lenovo adapter. And what I'm gonna use that for is, this is a 5S battery. If you do the math on 5S, you'll see it goes from about 21 volts down to about 18 and change. That's within the safe range. The Lenovo adapter put out 20.5 volts 
that's I can charge my laptop up off of this thing when I'm out and doing a site survey. Um, so that's why I built this. So let's do our little tests and checks on this adapter. Now let's let's just set aside the I've done let's presume that I've done the physical inspection already. So I should have continuity from negative to the outside, right? So let's do our continuity test first. Remember, I remember that negative is the, the, the bent one and positive is the flat one. I could double check that if I wasn't sure. When doing continuity, it usually doesn't matter whether you're using red or black, which one goes where. Usually if electricity flows one way, it'll flow the other way. So I'm gonna touch the negative pin here. I'm gonna touch the outside there. Bingo, got it, yes. Continuity, that's what we want. Just for funds, let's touch the, um, let's touch that inner pin and see if there's continuity there as well. I, I don't think there is. Yeah, so weird. Zero volts between them, but no continuity. Does it, and I know there's not a diode in here. This is just, there's no, di is there a diode in the connector? If there was a diode, then I would get a beep the one way, but not the other. Let's try that. Let's see if anything happens. No, I don't get a beep either way. I cannot figure out what's going on with that pin. How can you have no continuity but zero volts? I don't really know. Joshua from the future here. Uh, while editing this video, I think I did figure out what I'm overlooking here, what, what I did wrong with my multimeter that caused me to get what seemed like a bogus result. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the answer because it's not really relevant to this video. Uh, and it would require a lot more explanation uh, to, than this video calls for. And also, if I don't give you the answer, then those of you who can figure it out for yourself will get to feel super smart and clever and, and have a great day and smile and be nice as a result. So if you think you know the answer, put it down in the comments. And if you don't know the answer, don't worry. It doesn't really freaking matter. So now we'll check positive. I'll touch the positive pin and I'll touch the side wall of the Lenovo connector on the inside. So, okay, so this is wired up correctly. And then the next thing I'll check is I'll check, I'll go ahead and I'll plug it into the battery. And I wanna check that the voltage that I see here is the same as the voltage that I saw from the factory adapter. And I'm gonna double check that like five times. Because if I screw this up and I plug this into my computer, boom, I destroy, well, it's probably repairable, but yikes, bad news, right? So. Negative on the outside. Oh, we're going to go to DC volts. Negative on the outside. Positive to the side wall and 19.2 volts. See, black to where I think negative is, red to where I think positive is. I see a positive voltage. That means I've done it right. And in fact, I can tell you I have plugged this into my computer and the magic smoke did not come out. Whee! There you go. That's going to bring us to the end of this one. Uh, that is how you check the uh, the polarity of a connector, sure, but also if you're going to build your own connectors or adapters, that is how you verify what the polarity and the voltage and the pinout of the the connector is. And that it's a very basic thing. Get yourself a handful of of this kind of thing. This is a, a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter uh, pigtail, I guess you could call it. Get yourself a handful of these, and you can just make whatever your world is your oyster. Some XT 60s, etc. Just make up any kind of adapters you want. There you go. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.